Hey, I'm Randy and I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Here at the Cheap Audio Man, we don't feel like hi-fi equipment, speakers, DACs, amps, turntables, receivers, surround speakers, cables, should cost more than getting a couple wisdom teeth pulled when you don't have insurance down at the local strip mall because apparently dentist offices are now in strip malls. And these don't, what are they? They're the Aperion Virus three bookshelf speakers. Almost knocked everything off my desk. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about the Aperion Audio Beerus three bookshelf speakers. Today's sponsor is Scorpion Audio headphone holders. What do you want to spend a whole bunch of money on a headphone holder? Uh, go to Scorpion Audio. They're $350, $350 for a, a headphone holder, which incidentally looks very similar to something you can put toilet paper on and go down to your local home goods uh, retailer and get one of these. But Scorpion Audio sells them for $350 bucks and you can do that. Okay, Scorpion Audio. Okay. The Aperion Virus 3 bookshelf speaker. They're $799. That's not cheap, but they may be worth it. 85 dB sensitivity, 6 ohm resistance. They have a 1 inch tweeter and a 5 and a quarter inch woofer. The tweeter is silk dome and it's got ferro, ferro fluid, ferro fluid, something like that to make it sound better. The woofer is a five and a quarter inch Kevlar woven fiber. Wo woven. I always want to say woven. Woven fiber woofer. On the back, you have a set of bi ampable or bi wireable binding posts with a very nice uh, jumper made from wire. It looks really cool. You can also mount these on the ceiling or you can mount them on the wall or they have a little thing on the bottom where you can secure them to some, some speaker stands, stand mounts. They're stand mount speakers. These things are gorgeous. They have kind of a different type of a styling, rounded edges on top, kind of a, a domed kind of curvature on the top. Uh, just flawless, flawless finish on these. It, they look like a, a piece of art. They're gorgeous. They're rear ported and have magnetic grills. One of the prettiest speakers I've ever seen. On the back, there's also a treble mod, treble mod function. Basically, it's a jumper that you can move from zero dB treble down to negative three dB treble. And on their website, you can take a look at what their frequency response is. I tried it, I actually ended up going the negative three dB. So, let's talk about soundstage and imaging. Soundstage and imaging can be, and sometimes is, affected by your room. However, I've, in my experience, if it soundstages and images well in my office, it generally does that in other rooms as well. Wherever I may roam, the at the 14 second mark came way right. Hello by Adele was also above the speakers in every room. I tried these in my office, of course, in my bedroom, and I've been listening to them there for a while, and then in my big living room. Imaging, very good. I got great imaging with these really towed almost directly into the room. I tried them towed in a little bit, and I also tried them heavily towed in. Imaging, very good. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, the chain, the bass drum and the, at the beginning of that song came right in the middle. Very, very, very good. I didn't notice soundstage going super wide, However, when I pulled them out into the room, the soundstage was behind the speakers and pretty tall, considering that they're stand mount speakers, bookshelf speakers. Bar stool mounted speakers, bar stool balance speakers. Let's talk about bass. Bass on these has always, well, let me back up. Bass with appearing speakers, and I've only tried the Novus and now the Virus 
has always surprised me for not only the size of the woofer, but how deep it actually extends and the smoothness of the roll off. Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys was very smooth. I could hear the idea of the enormity of the bass, but the bass also seems very balanced and very neutral because when I put on Highway to Hell, it was pretty tight. Also, the last track on the MTV Unplugged Corn album, there's Tycho drums at the beginning. I noticed that the bass was very quick, very accurate, very pleasing. Again, very surprising how much bass that comes out of these little speakers. Let's talk about mid-range. Mid-range on these speakers tends to lean more towards the detailed rather, rather than the warm. I would call this a neutral speaker. However, I think it leans more towards detail than to body. Rooster by Alice in Chains, again off the MTV Unplugged. I'm listening for acoustic guitars, I'm listening for the harmonies, and I'm listening for richness in the vocals. I did not notice that it was overtly thin. Oh, I Again, though, it leans toward the detailed. A richer speaker is going to fill out the vocals, but acoustic guitars did not seem unnatural. They seemed very good if, again, leaning a little bit more towards the analytical. However, mid-range for me was just fine, with the exception of this speaker, for me personally, had a tendency to get a little bit fatiguing at times. At low volumes, this speaker was great. However, when I turned it up, I did notice a little bit of, initially I was everything was great. And then after a while I was like, hmm, okay, I'm feeling a little bit of pressure on my eardrums. That was when I had them towed in directly at me. When I towed them out, that mitigated it a little bit, but I did notice some fatigue on these speakers. It wasn't all the time, but when it set in, it set in and I had to take a break from them for a little while. I think that has more to do with where I had the tweeter aimed and also the level of the tweeter. When I got above the tweeter a little bit, i.e. I brought the tweeter level down a little bit, the vertical off axis of these speakers is very good, but I was able to bring down what to me was a little bit too much at times and it was, it was quite good. So vertical off-axis off of these is very good, but if you want to bring that down, if you notice that these speakers are a little bit fatiguing for you, play with the toe-in and then play with the height of the speakers. Let's talk about treble. Treble is very good. Again, as with the Novus into the Virus, treble is very detailed. I was actually surprised because when I talked to Aperion Audio, they mentioned that the Verus was actually a little bit more relaxed speaker on top. I did not find that. Actually, I found the very opposite. I feel like the Verus is a little bit more exciting on top than the Novus. Even in the negative 3 dB position for the treble mod, I noticed that the speaker was very detailed and very exciting on top. Never too exciting for me, but very detailed. If you like treble, put it in the zero dB. If you want it to be a little bit more relaxed, put it in the negative three dB. But even the negative three dB, this speaker is very detailed. Cymbal crashes on Harvester of Sorrow by Metallica were very crisp, leaned a little bit overtly analytical for me, but very detailed. Wasn't too, it, it had good decay though. So it was very, but it, it was and a so, not the most accurate treble I've ever heard in a speaker, but not too abbreviated. Very good, but walks the line of being overtly analytical. Still has a good symbol decay. Very good speaker from a detail perspective. The percussion in Higher Love by Steve Woodenwood, at the beginning there's a whole bunch of percussion going on, and the snap and the thwack of the drumstick on the snare drum or on the rims was very tactile in nature. Maybe lacked a little bit of body, but I, I don't have any issues with it. Treble very good, very detailed. Leans a little bit analytical, but not overtly analytical. What are my final thoughts?
final thoughts for the Aperian Beerus 3 bookshelf slash stand mount slash bar stool balanced speakers. Very good. Low volumes. This is a great speaker. It's a gorgeous speaker. This could really be kind of, I don't think anybody's going to look at the, look at this thing and be like, Oh no, this could be a very nice focal point in your living room. If you're using these for surrounds, I mean, gorgeous speakers. Bass is surprising. Bass is quick. Bass is detailed. I think tone and texture is great for these speakers. I feel like they may be crossed over. Um, and this isn't bad. I feel like they may be crossed over a little bit low, which is great because you get a lot of the detail. However, with that detail in the mids, I felt like these had a tendency to be sometimes fatiguing for me. Mitigate that by toying them out if it's too much or bringing down or up the level. This speaker is excellent at low volumes. Do I think it can be a desktop speaker? I do, but again, there's a lot of energy going on out of that tweeter. So if you're using these in a desktop situation, make sure that you get them towed in correctly because they can overwhelm you at times with detail. Do I recommend these? I do. I do, if you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, if you are after very analytical, very uh, big sound from a small package, these are great. $800 for me seems pushing it. However, when you take a look at the finish, it makes sense. These are one of the most gorgeous speakers I've ever seen. They obviously put some time and investment into how these speakers look. I'd love to see these around the $600 mark. I get it though. They do play big in a big room. However, in a very, very large room, of course, you're probably going to want a subwoofer. Aperion sells a lot of subwoofers as well. They don't even really refer to the woofer as, you know, a woofer. It's a mid bass driver. So I think these are meant to made up with a subwoofer. However, they do hit really low. I got very low 40s was what I heard in my room, especially in smaller rooms. It obviously got deeper because of room gain. Gorgeous speaker, very detailed, extremely great at low volumes, pretty versatile with the mounting options. If you're mounting it next to a wall, I would think about plugging that port. The Novus are front ported. These are rear ported, so bear that in mind. Aperion's a great outfit. I really like that company. They're doing a lot of great things. Their speakers are gorgeous. They push the limits for driver sizes. Most people are gonna be happy. Bear in mind though, that the Novus are excellent as well, lower price point. I'm gonna check with Aperion because they did give me a discount code. Uh, I think it was 10% off. So that would bring these down to about 720. Also check out their open box. Their open box are great values. If you wanna support the channel and you like what we're doing over here, consider subscribing. Hit the bell icon so you know when all my videos go up. I think that's so obnoxious, but I'm saying it anyway because other people say it. You can also use the link to buy the Aperion speakers. I will get a commission if you use those links. You can also sign up for Amazon Music. High definition tracks are now included with Amazon Music. It's also, well, by the time you see this, it won't be Prime Day anymore. Anyway, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have patron only Zooms. They're a lot of fun. Sometimes we have guest peoples on the patron only Zooms. Like last Sunday, we had Ron from New Record Day. He talked all about room stuff, room treatments stuff. It's very interesting. I don't know anything about that stuff, but Ron does. So don't binge watch anything can't find my coffee. Mug. Don't binge watch anything. Binge listen, maybe through your new Aperion Virus 3 bookshelves, stand mount, bar stool balance speakers, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap audio man.